move on uh, to our first topic. Hey, town. You know what I'm saying? To our first topic of this sports segment. Hey, hold on, let me stretch a little bit. Oh, yeah. Now, the first topic of this is, can the Atlanta Falcons remain undefeated? You guys knew hell this was coming. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. I'm saying hell yeah. Saying hell yeah, yeah from the rip? <laughs> yeah! I definitely think they can, man. Like, I ain't even looked at the rest of their schedule, but the way they've been playing, Matt Ryan, like, he, he like on cloud nine or some shit. Like, this is his year. Like, I don't know, man. They, they looking real good. And I'm, I'm gonna just be optimistic and say that they can pull it off. All right. Check this out. Now, me, myself, I have looked at the rest of the games. Okay. Now, they face New Orleans, like we just said. Then they face I, Arizona. They then they face Arizona, Tampa Bay. They're gonna get that. Then they face New Orleans again after Tampa Bay. Then they go against the Carolina <laughs> Panthers. No way. Then they go against the Giants. That's the only test that they will have for the rest of the season. Now, where this is, where is that game? Is that game in ATL or in, in the ATL, league? bro? Oh, I think they can get it then. Then they playing they playing your Lions. Then they're playing yeah, Tampa Bay again at home. I ain't even gonna. I ain't gonna hold you up, man. They probably beat us. So basically, both of us are on the same type of cloud right now. We on cloud now with Ryan saying that they can go undefeated this season. I just hope they don't do like some some old boo boo shit where they win all of these games and then they get to the playoffs and drop their first game of the season and be yeah. out. And be like, out. Yeah. <laughs> that that will hurt. Worse, man. I don't know if it's just me, but I hate it when a team is either going undefeated or like wiping teams out in the playoffs, and then you get to the final game, the game that matters, and then you either get blown out, swept, or just ran out the building. It's like that's embarrassing. I would have rather not even been there, man. But you know, that's just me. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel you on that though. But uh, all right, since we both feel the same way about the Atlanta Falcons having a undefeated season now i know this is killing me they beat my eagles it is what it is but i'm just gonna have to put it like this with the rest of their schedule it's really not too much that they have to see and what makes it so bad is they see a few teams a few times they don't just they don't see more people on the rest of their schedule it's Tampa Bay a few times um who else breeze yeah they see breeze a few times so they really the defense gets to see the offense twice the offense gets to pick away at the defense twice, so I'm thinking they may be able to go undefeated. But like hey, I and said, I want to get I want to give all the football fans out there that's listening a chance that who don't agree with us, call the hotline right now and let us know why you think the Eagles, not the Eagles, but the Falcons will or will not remain undefeated. What team do you think they're gonna take an L to? Call up three one three seven four four three seven six six. I I seriously want to know because I mean, with me and Carter both believing that this team could be undefeated, I want to hear some opposition. Why do y'all think they will take a loss? Why do you think Ryan is not on cloud nine and he's eventually gonna fall off? I want to know. I seriously do because in my mind, like I don't see where the Falcons have a weakness at this point. Like they handling business, man, on both ends. Exactly. Now, moving on to our next topic. Now, this topic right here, I hold this in the hands of football and basketball, not just one sport. Now, my question is to everybody, like you just said, you know, if you have any questions, answers, concerns or anything, leave them on the hotline. But does, does the media have a big influence on a team's performance? What do you think, Jay? Hmm. See, like i put it like this like i feel like the media has an influence on everybody's performance like on ball teams it's all about the impact and this is the thing when it is different between football and basketball because with football is you don't really want the media to be influencing your players your team at all because think about it you drop one game and you, and you pretty much can blow your season with basketball, it's a little bit easier, man. I mean, that's why I feel like you hear a lot of different stories throughout the season when it comes with basketball. Just look at last year with Dwight Howard. Like, that dude was a freaking news topic. He was up for discussion every fucking... Oh, no plug up for discussion. But, yeah, he was up for discussion, like, every single week. Like, is this dude leaving the team? Is he going to be traded? Oh, Dwight doesn't want to go. Dwight this... I mean, that type of shit is going to have an effect on you. LeBron... Kobe, these dudes, they get hate, they get love. I mean, it kind of brush off of them. But with football, 
I feel like it's the worst in football because you can easily, easily had a media pit a offense versus a defense on the same team and yeah. just screw up a fucking locker room. Just look at the T, the Tebow fiasco, man. You got two quarterbacks in the same locker room. Of course, they say it ain't no strife, but it's <laughs> obvious when Tebow came to that team, it was people on that team, the Jets, in case y'all don't know who I'm talking about, that was not against him, that weren't for him. They didn't want to do it on the team, and you got to know that that's in the back of your mind as a player. And then you got the media talking about, oh, Tebow, he's doing this and he's doing that. Should he lose his job? Is Tebow going to get traded? This, this, and that. Is he going to be a running back? Man, at the end of the day, I feel like the media does have an influence I feel like a bigger influence on football rather than basketball, though. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the fortitude of the team and the mental strength of players, man. So that that's my whole spiel on it, man. How you feel? All right. Well, being a Philadelphia fan, I feel the, almost the same exact way. But the thing about me is, as a Philadelphia Eagles fan, I feel as though that Michael Vick has opened himself up to the media for years. Ever since that scandal that he was a part of, it seemed like he could never get out of the, out of the eyes of the media. So it's always weighed on him more and more. The coach for the Philadelphia Eagles is always in the media. With the problems that, that he has had with his sons, the death of his son, it's, it's so much weighing down on him as well. And let alone Deshaun Jackson being a wide receiver, trying to speak up for his quarterback and his team, but really feeling out of place because he hasn't really done much all season. And, yeah. of course, the team having a unlimited amount of injury, it seems like. The team just feels, to me, like when it comes to the media, they influence them an entire lot. Like, it's nothing that the Eagles can do to get out of the media's eye because they were supposed to be a star team. They were supposed to be a playoff team. And when you don't live up to the hype, it breaks you down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, with my Sixers, on the other hand, they're supposed to be a playoff bound team with a better roster, more weapons, but they're hit with injuries as well. Jason Richardson just went out with a sprained ankle. Uh, Kwame Brown, even though he's not all that, he went out with some type of calf injury or something like that. Bynum hasn't even suited up yet, you know, and my sixes look like a team, you know, of course they got the first game of the season, but they've just dropped two to New York and got picked apart defensively. If you look at the way the Sixers played that game, every team that would want to play the Sixers would want to run a pick and roll all night long because that's what works. You would want to go up against the Sixers with being so, so aggressive that the Sixers would literally just lay in a corner, sit down, and just take a beating. The first game they played against the New York Knicks, they lost by 10. The second game, 20. Like, <laughs> being a, being, crazy. <laughs> it's like being a, being a Philadelphia fan on Monday night that just passed was horrible. First, I had to watch my Sixers get picked apart. Then the Eagles came on. I was like, I was just getting it from all different ways. And the way the media portrayed it was, okay, well, the Sixers can bag back from this because the injuries that have been sustained aren't that crucial or damaging. But as it goes for the Eagles, their season looked like it's over, you know, because all the problems that some may happen with the coach or some may happen with Vic, they don't know what's going on. The firing of the defensive coordinator and bringing bringing in somebody that has got torched two games straight. Mm -hmm. You know, he got torched by Lane and now he got torched by Drew Brees. What is that defensive coordinator going to do? Is he going to get fired? Who and and another thing that's happening with the media? A lot media, of questions, yeah. bro. <laughs> Yo, it's, it's so it's so sad because when I look at the way the Eagles play. I'm like, okay, they can do better. But at times, I get so frustrated because I'm like, yo, this is not the team I seen last season. You know, and I'm nah, like, I'm nah, like, they definitely ain't the team from last season. And I'm like, oh they my God. They that squad, bro. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, the same thing for my Lions, man. They far from the team that played last season, man. Yeah, and man. I'm just, I'm, I'm mind boggled right now. But as it goes for the media, I think they have a lot. Of say when it comes to putting pressure on players, and like you said, pitting the defense against the offense on one team is for you know football wise. You can say that for the Sixers as well because when you put it like this, everybody says Drew Holiday is a great defender, but he's not a great offensive player. They say, oh, Jason Richardson can put up points, but he's getting old. Or you can say Nick Young 
at times can be a bit sporadic on offense, but how's his defense? You know, they put they they pick See, that, apart. That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, do you feel like when the media pushes negative news, is that like something to get the team riled up in a positive way? Or do you feel like when the team is talking about another player, I don't know, I'm not going to necessarily say positive because media news is rarely positive. It's either overly focused on somebody or if it's always talking about what's going bad with the team. And do you feel like it has a positive impact? And when do you feel that it has a negative impact on the team? Uh, to me, in Philadelphia, it has a negative impact all the time. You can even tell whether it's good or bad news. Whether, whether it's good or bad news, you can tell a team that is twenty-one and zero that they're doing great, but in the back of their minds, they're like, "Are we doing good enough?" And that's how it's always been for any Philadelphia teams. Now, take this take this into um, consideration. Iguodala left, went to Denver. He came back home for the first game of the season and he poured his damn heart out to everybody body telling them that they tried to make him into a certain player, tried to make him into an all-star, didn't let him shoot. And he felt like he was tied down by the fans and the public and the media and they just never understood him. That's mm-hmm. that's that has to be going on with every other Philadelphia athlete period that's that's just the way it has to be but what about outside of philly though like how do you feel about teams outside of philly though teams outside of philly teams outside of philly that have bad teams Mm -hmm. can definitely you know get riled up just like the Sixers can but at times feel like they're under the earth but for teams like miami thunder lakers teams like that they have superstars their mentality they've been in the game for years their mentality is this we're not a young team. We have great talent on this team, and we got to fight to rise above it. Whereas though the yeah. Sixers, they don't have any real vets on that team. You feel yeah. everybody is young on the Sixers. You feel yeah, me? I feel like with teams that are in a position to win or teams that have like really good teams, not just one or two players that's just dope, but just actual good teams. I feel like whether the news is negative or positive from the media, that they're going to use it to fuel them. Like with the Heat, all year they caught hell because they didn't win a championship in their first year. So you know what? Last year they came back. They took all the negative news. All would they be able to do it? Would they be able to get past Boston? Would they be able to get past the Lakers or OKC or even the Spurs? What is going to happen? Man, that team decided to take all of that and fuel it. The whole Skip Bayless versus LeBron and D-Wade and all of that, they used it to their benefit. Then I look at teams like my squad, like the Pistons. You look at teams like uh, like Golden State, like Washington, even the Bobcats. Teams like that, it's like they feel like they got the weight of the world on them. Exactly. And it's like, no, they don't have no, they get no airplay. You'd be lucky if you get a televised basketball game outside of what's already in your local area. And then if it is something in the news, like last year, it was Sue. Granted, that nigga was stumping out other players. But it's just like when you do get in the news, it's not for nothing positive. I mean, you look at the seasons that Stafford had, that that uh, fucking Megatron had last year. They weren't talking about that. It was Sue, 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 Sue all fucking year. Yep. That's all we heard. Yeah. And it's like when you got teams that aren't on the rise, that are not at that level where they can win a championship, I feel like any news can almost be flipped to be bad because they always feel like they got the weight of the world on them, man. I feel so I don't know. That, that's just kind of how I look at it, man. Good teams, you're in a position to win. You really could care less what the media is saying. Exactly. Other teams, is in the back of your mind, like constantly. Constantly. But with that being said, let's move on to our next topic that kind of has something to do with this. Now... My question to everybody is, do you think the L.A. Lakers are just good on paper or are they the real deal? 